Barreling down the highway, waving right along. Hear the tires popping, humming out a song. The rumble of the diesel, the shifting of the gears. The rhythm when he's rolling, his music to his ears. Cannonball! to the farm, Uncle Fred. You should have turned right. I want to go to the farm, Uncle Fred. Stop yakking about the farm, both of you. But you said it. You said we were going to the farm. That's why I sneaked Lori out of the playground. All right, I said it. You might as well know. There is no more farm. Everything went to the lawyers. They put me in prison. Took you kids away from me, my own brother's kids. They put you in a crummy orphanage. And I showed him. I broke out. They're never gonna take me back. Never. Where are we going, Uncle Fred? No one will ever find us again. No one. Getting too much pressure. It'll hold till we roll in. Can't be too soon for me. Getting nippy. Fish out the windbreakers, Jerry. Okay. Mike, you better pull over the side. I think we gotta go. trying to see the world through a windshield. Jerry, another one. Come on down, sweetheart. Don't be frightened, no. Nobody's gonna hurt you. No. Tell me your name, son. Can't Jimmy, I'm Laurie. Laurie? That's a very pretty name. Okay, Jimmy, tell me where you live and we'll take you home. Don't say anything. Oh, cooperative little type. Maybe he needs a bribe, like a gallon of ice cream. Now, son, don't be stubborn. Think about your folks at home. 
going nutty, worrying about you, wondering where you are. Come on. Where do you live? Let me handle this. I got away with women. Sweetheart, tell me where you live. Honey, my name's Mike. You can call me Uncle Mike. I live in Toronto. Where do you live? Well, Uncle Mike, what's the next move? Do we build a bonfire and roast some marshmallows, or shall we sing them to sleep with a little rock and roll? Wise guy. The next move is to get a man out of the cold. Come on. No, no, no. I'm not going to hurt her, darling. I'm not going to hurt you. Get right up there. That's a sweet girl. Mike, what are we going to do? We're going to roll. There's no sense staying here. I don't mean that. I said, I mean, what are we going to do with the kids? I think better behind the wheel. Come on. You heard what he said, Skipper. Up you go. Talk about Silent Sam. This lad makes the Sphinx look like an auctioneer. If I ever pulled a deal like this when I was a kid, my father would have taken me into the woodshed. If he didn't have a woodshed, he would have built one. Did your old man ever build you, Jerry? Oh, plenty. <laughs> Wasted motion. From where I sit, it didn't help a bit. All right, all right. Skip the child psychology. You've got a problem. And as usual, it's up to me to solve it. Okay, so solve it. First off, when we pull in, we unload this hot cargo to the police. You hear me right, Mike? The police. So? So that's it. Problem solved. Any objections? I guess not. They can probably take better care of them than we can. Why do kids like this run away? Parents worrying. Probably going crazy, thinking they're hurt or something. Well, if they're as quiet as this around the house, they probably don't even know they're missing. Number four division, Sergeant Quinlan speaking. Oh, hi, Mike. Oh, just a minute. Sounds like the same ones. There's been a bulletin out on them for the last 12 hours. Here's what we got. A fellow named Fred Holton broke out of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, they must have climbed on in Montreal. We came straight through. Well, this Holton was their legal guardian. That is, until they threw the book at him. He's a two-time loser. Enticed the kids out of the orphanage playground. Figured nobody would stop a guy with a couple of children. You see, the girl was about to be adopted. That's right. Boy, too, but not by the same family. Look, I'll phone the orphanage, and in the meantime, Mike, you bring the kids over here. What? <laughs> well, if you want to take them home and feed them first, it's okay by me. Thanks, Joe. Supposed to turn him in, Mike. Oh, take it easy. T take it easy. Mike, this car goes hot, real hot. I'll bet my bonus is alarm out already. How are you going to explain? It's already explained. I talked to Joe Quinlan. There is an alarm out. So? So we're going to take him home, wash him up, and feed him. We'll turn him in late. Boy, you sure like to stick your neck out. <laughs> Freddy, sometimes you got to stick your neck out. Stick an old turtle. He didn't stick his neck out, he'd never get anywhere. So now you're a turtle. All right. Now I'm a turtle. Let's get home. Don't gulp your milk, sweetheart. 
a good girl. Sure, Joe, they're fine. Even like there's no tomorrow. Well, the orphanage people are going to pick them up. Uh, Joe, I figure like this. All you got at the station is a cooler. You haven't even got a matron there. Now, these kids are beat and they're scared. How about letting Mary put them to bed for a few hours? Sticking your neck out again. Pipe down. Uh, how's that, Joe? Well, I, I don't know, Mike. Regulations say that... So I'll take the responsibility. Good enough? The least we can do is clean them up and keep them warm. Uh, thanks, Joe. You got nothing to worry about. You got my word. Yeah. Yeah, I tell her. Bye. Everything's okay. The orphanage people will be in from Montreal tomorrow morning. They'll pick up the kids then. Till then, we're responsible for them. Oh, good. Come along, get off to bed, we go. And quietly, we mustn't wait Jenny and Butch. How'd you do it? There's one guy that goes strictly by the book. It's Joe Quinlan. Right. He also happens to be a father. Let's get some coffee. No, no. My down, I'm gonna hit the sack. See you tomorrow. Night. Night, buddy. Jimmy is my kind of boy. Sure he is. Stubborn as a Kentucky mule. Now, oh, you wait a minute. Oh, never mind. I'm not doing spite of it. I don't know, Mary. Most kids don't know how lucky they are. Parents, good homes, plenty of time to toughen up before the lumps start coming to them. But those two, they've got two strikes against them before they even learn how to swing a bat. I know, dear. That Laurie. I wish she were ours. Yeah. She'll probably make those people who are adopting her awfully happy. Poor Jimmy. You said he was being adopted, too. Yeah, but not by the same people. He's not. No, they could be thousands of miles apart. Oh, no. Some people say it's a small world. But it could be a very big world to that boy. His heart is probably thinking that he'll never see his sister again. You remind me so much of Ginny and Butch when they were little. Sure do. <laughs> the way he looks at her. She's as much a part of him as his, as his hands or his legs. Poor kids. I wish we could do something about it. Better come to bed now, Mike. No, I'm not sleepy, dear. You run out. Well, don't stay out too long. Now look in on the children. Good night, dear. Good night, sweetheart. for it. You just take it easy now. Listen, Joe, I, I swear to you, I'm telling the truth. Mary took him upstairs to put him to bed. When she came down... Yeah, Joe. But we'll find him. I know I'm in a jam. I promise you we'll find him. Willing to you out? Like I was hamburger. Come on, let's go. Mike, we better split up. Yeah, okay. You head for the bridge. If I don't have any luck, I'll meet you there. Right.
I get my hands on you.
Get up, please. You've got to. Let me tell you, when I saw those two kids sitting on that track and the freight bearing down on them, I... Oh, hi, Jerry. Uh, Jerry, this is Miss Craig from the orphanage. How do you do? Mr. and Ms. Foster, the couple who are adopting Lori. Oh, nice to meet you both. Uh, this is my partner, Jerry Austin. And this is what happens when you lead with your chin. <laughs> <laughs> we understand from Sergeant Quinlan that the uncle got much the worst of it. And Jerry was much too gentle with him. Should have torn them limb from limb. Look, Mary will have the kids ready in a minute. She's got them all spruced up. That Lori's a little doll. Isn't she, though? We're so delighted to have her. Uh, nothing wrong with that Jimmy. He's a great kid. You know what he said? Last night after it was all over, he said... Oh, I'm sorry we've kept you waiting. Lori, dear? Coffee. Oh, I'm afraid we really must run, Mrs. Malone. We have a long trip. But I can't tell you how much we appreciate all you've done. And that includes leading with your chin, Mr. Austin. Uh, wait a, just a minute, please, before you go. Uh, Jerry here says uh, I'm a lot like a turtle. I keep sticking my neck out. And I, I guess maybe he's right. Well, anyway, here it goes again. This boy. Jimmy, he's one in a million. He doesn't say much, but he's got a wall-to-wall -wall heart. Well, you two are good people. You're going to give Lori a, a wonderful home. But what about Jimmy? He'll have a nice home, too, Mr. Malone. Yes, I know. But his sister won't be with him. He thinks more of her than anything else in the world. Is it fair that his luck's run out before he's even 10 years old? My dear, please. I'm sorry, Mary. Like I say, my neck's out. Mr. Foster, what about it? I mean, adopting Jimmy, too. If I know anything, he'll never be a burden to you. You'll be just as proud of him as I am. Sweetheart, would you? Sure. But, Miss Craig. Miss Craig? Would there be a chance? I'm sure there would, Mrs. Foster. We don't like to separate brother and sister, but sometimes these things just happen. You mean we can have Jimmy, too? Well, I don't see why not. Of course, there are the usual formalities, but I assure you, I'll recommend it. Come here, Sam. Mary, I want you to meet Turtle Malone, a real great guy. Hello, Turtle.
down the highway, wheeling right along. Hear the tires humming, humming out a song. The rumble of the diesel, the shifting of the gears, the rhythm when he's rolling, his music to his ears. Cannonball, cannonball. Any kind of weather, any time of day, when the rig is ready, he'll be on his way. He'll carry any cargo, he'll go anywhere. Aim the destination, and father, he'll be there. Cannonball!